thank you Veer for introduce, introducing me. So first I would like to thank all the organizers for giving me the chance to present here. The title of my talk is Nonlinear Anomalous Hall Effects Detect Topological Phase Transition in Moira Super Lattices. This work was basically done in my previous tenure when I was in India. So as you can see there are several terminologies that is included in this title. So that's why we start with the usual classic Hall effect that we all know. Then we introduce what is anomalous Hall effect and its nonlinear counterpart. And by the end of my talk, I hope to convince you all this an nonlinear anomalous Hall effect has some fundamental characteristics and that is associated with the topology of the system. So let's start with the classic Hall effect that is introduced by Edwin, Edwin Hall in the year of 1879. That suggests that if an electrical current is flowing through a conductor in presence of mag oh no. okay, sorry. in presence of some vertical magnetic field, then there is a net charge uh, piling up at the perpendicular direction uh, with the velocity vector. And uh, we get a transverse voltage or transverse response that we call an usual Hall voltage. Now, uh, if we equate the electric and uh, the Lorentz force due to the magnetic field, we can get the Hall resistivity, which is inversely proportional to the carrier density of the system and linearly proportional to the external magnetic field. So it can be apparently think if we turn off the external magnetic field, this term will goes off. But that's not true. Because in the immediate next two years, it was reported we can get Hall responses even in absence of any external magnetic field. And this Hall response or the transverse response is proportional to the magnetization of the system. So the specific systems where we see that this, those are the ferromagnetic systems. So this is the plot from the original article where they have plotted the magnetic field here. And even the magnetic field is zero, they get some finite Hall response. The origin was not known, so it was termed as anomalous Hall then. For a very long period of time, the actual reason or origin of this anomalous Hall was controversial. So for the initial studies, it was uh, like thought to be originated from the extrinsic origin. What do I mean by extrinsic origin? Like some defects impurity, scattering uh, um, between the charge carriers and so on. But later in the year of 1954, Karplas and Lutinger introduced that no, the, in, the anomalous Hall origin can be intrinsic to the system. So let's see how we can write down the equation of motion, semi-classical equation of motion of electron like this. This is the famous Lorentz. Uh, um, Lorentz force equation that we all know and the velocity vector we can uh, it can have two terms. The first term is the rate of change of uh, center of mass of the wave packet that is a groove velocity we all know. And there is another second term which, uh, uh, which is called the anomalous velocity and this is related to the Berry curvature of the system. You heard this uh, term in introduction of the Lucas stock if you remember correctly. So uh, this anomalous velocity is related to the self rotation of the electronic wave function. So if you want to think very naively, you are playing a cricket and if you throw the ball, it will go straight. But if you want to out the batsman, you give a self rotation of the ball and it, it, it will swing and deflect from its path. And the batsman is out and here we get our expected anomalous Hall conductivity. And it is defined like this, uh, which is integration over the Berry curvature of the system. So now, but the necessary criteria to get the anomalous Hall conductivity is breakdown of time reversal symmetry. That's why we are getting uh, anomalous Hall in presence of some external magnetic field or any ferromagnetic systems, where it is uh, the uh, time reversal symmetry broken criteria was there. And in some systems, this anomalous um, Hall conductivity is quantized in nature. And what do I mean by quantized? And this carries some topological character. So let's discuss this in more detail. Let's 
see this, this is a sphere and this is a torus. This is famous example to explain any topology. These two are not equivalent. Uh, what do we mean by equivalent? We can't deform or continuously transform one structure to the another because there is a hole, but there is not. So you need to puncture it. And if we want to discuss it from the band perspective, let's say we have to start with, we have two bands of some character, what I define by some colors. And it has some other characters and going through a band closing. So this is our topological transition point. The characters get changed. And as a result, this white is the surface state. Here there is no surface state. Here we can get surface state. So, and if we calculate chart number for this two, this will be different. So for it, any topological transition, the criteria is that there sh should be no continuous transition. The bands must be closed. And we should have some topological index to define these two different phases. And the chart number should be different. Oh, uh, here, but no, th this was like whether we can uh, get rid of any strong coupling, any magnetism just from this geometric origin, yes. can we yes. uh, have that? So, so, so why is it happening in ferromagnetism? Right? That we come later, okay. whether it's restricted okay. to ferromagnets or not. Yeah, but it was the initial proposal uh, for ferromagnetic system, they see this kind of behavior. Yeah. That, that, was, that was like 1881 and we are already in 2023, yeah. So let's see. So the obvious questions can come to our mind is that whether we can define any anomalous Hall response for time reversal symmetric systems that was not proposed in the initial stages. So the answer came with this famous gentleman in the year of 2015. Yeah, we can get. How? Let's see. If a system preserves both time reversal symmetry and space inversion symmetry, the Bailey curvature follows these two expressions. And simultaneous presence of time reversal and space inversion, the Bailey curvature has to go to zero at every point, every momentum point. So to have any finite Bailey curvature, because our anomalous Hall conductivity will depend on this Bailey curvature. So we need finite Bailey curvature. We need to break the space inversion because our interest is in the time reversal symmetric systems. So now, we know our anomalous Hall velocity can be defined like this. Now, in presence of the longitudinal electric field that was not thought previously, the system is actually out of equilibrium, slightly, but yes, where the Fermi surface is shifted to its original un uh, equilibrium position with the electric field. And as a result, the Hall current can be written like this. This is the total Fermi surface times the velocity. And if you see this F naught, the equilibrium Fermi surface times the velocity is our linear anomalous Hall conductivity. That is zero because uh, this equilibrium thing is uh, symmetric over the origin. So the positive and negative half cancel out in presence of time reversal. But uh, people was not thought about before 2015 what happens due to this small perturbation. And as a result, this, this times the velocity gives a finite number. And if you see, this delta F is proportional to the electric field, as well as the velocity, anomalous velocity is also proportional to the electric field. So the response what we are getting now is nonlinear in nature, rather than the linear anomalous Hall conductivity. So that's the trick. And uh, as for the time reversal symmetric, broken system, the anomalous wall was proportional to the Bailey curvature, whereas for this systems, this is proportional to the Bailey curvature dipole. That means the first moment of the Bailey curvature. Okay, so far so good. Like uh, in the time reversal symmetric systems, we are getting some anomalous Hall response, although this is nonlinear in nature. But as we have defined that anom linear anomalous Hall response can be quantized and can probe the topology of the system. Can we have something similar here? So before going to some materialistic calculations or some complex Hamiltonian solving, we need to check the feasibility of our expectation. Do I uh, expect this from a very simple model calculations? 
So for that, we chosen uh, our favorite tilted graphene model, where this uh, first term is uh, similar to the sigma. This is a value specific Hamiltonian of the tilted graphene. This is the sigma dot k, and the second term is a tilt. And we set like this uh, tilt of the two values are opposite in nature. But we need to have some parameter that will tune from one phase to another because in the first case, we saw that there should be a gap closing to go from one phase to another. So there should be some controlling parameter in the Hamiltonian. Till now, this is not changing at all for a given system. So we chose here a vertical electric field that has nothing to do with the longitudinal electric field that we are putting here. We're, and there is another term, which is delta. This you can think of a gap parameter, which captures the potential of the system uh, that is induced by this vertical electric field, which is just a controlling knob, nothing else. Now, if we want to define the Berry curvature, this is like uh, the minus, sorry, the minus sign is for the conduction band and the plus sign is the valence band. And very similar to the churn number, we define here a valley churn number. If you sum up over the two values, it will be zero to protect the time reversal symmetric condition. So we define that here. Sorry. And now we have calculated for one valley, for like upward electric field, what is the band dispersion and its character, and then we change the direction of the electric field and what we get, we are getting. So you can see the character of these two bands. This, uh, this is the Berry curvature color map of these two bands. And S plus means we are restricting ourselves to one valley. And this is getting opposite. And if delta is 0, this is very much similar like this. So from this phase to this phase, it should be uh, going from with a band closing point. So there is some analogical analogy we are getting already. And we define a new index here where this C, uh, which is like Z2C we call, which is the difference between the two valley churn numbers. And that is changing sign. This is just a definition for now. And we have calculated the Berry curvature dipole of the system. Why we are interested in Berry curvature dipole? Because as I already told, the nonlinear Hall response will be proportional to the Berry curvature dipole of the system. And it changes its sign. So if you are in two different phases, then the Berry curvature dipole is changing sign. So it's, it's something very similar, but the picture is not still clear to us. So now we are trying to uh, find some example where we can like um, check this, our this uh, initial expectation. The three criteria uh, which need to be satisfied in the system is time reversal symmetry should, should be preserved, space inversion symmetry should be broken, and we need some controlling nap knob that will go from one phase to another. So the system comes with uh, our mind after discussing with our experimental collaborators is the Moira systems. So what is the excitement of this Moira systems? So then let's check what is this Moira systems. So there is a world breakthrough has happened in the year of 2018 when Pablo Herrero was uh, discovered this magic angle twisted bilayer graphene. I will come to later what I mean by magic. So what they did is that they put two identical copies of graphene layer on top of each other with a very small relative rotation. And in this platform, he can probe different phases at, at once. Like if they vary the carrier density, they can go from superconductivity to mort insulator to metallic behavior. And this uh, proposition was immediately verified by Dmitry Efitov in the next years. After this initial discovery, there are tsunami of articles, like reporting uh, ferroelectricity, correlated insulating behavior, some spontaneous ferromagnetism, so on. So everyone just uh, synthesizing that with a different fist angle and getting different behavior. So that's a uh, playground of this thing. So now comes what is magic here. So to discuss that, first let's ch uh, check this single monolayer graphene, and we all know there is a linear dispersion. Now we put two copies of graphene on top of each other with a very small twist, and we make sure they are not seeing each other at all. 
So that means there are two dis, uh, dis, linearly dispersing Dirac cones, which are small apart. But in actual scenario, they two do see each other. We can't make them fool. And there is a finite probability from, of tunneling from one layer to another. So whenever they are crossing, they are crossing for some momentum point, there is a bond, uh, mixing of bands, and they form a bonding and antibonding kind of nature and opens up a gap. And for strong enough coupling, which is very evident for very small twist angle, this becomes extremely flat. And it, uh, it uh, just gives extremely flat bands near the Fermi energy. Now, if we do an actual low energy continuum model calculation, we have, I have not put the complex Hamiltonian expression here, but if you are interested, we will definitely go and discuss. Uh, I have that in my backup slides. So if we solve the low energy continuum model Hamiltonian near 1.1 degree of twist rotation, that you can see they're extremely flat bands. That's why initially it was thought to have a platform for the strongly correlated physics. And if you disperse in both directions, like you reduce or increase the angle, the band starts dispersing. And the main interest is around this 1.1 degree or close enough that. So our interest was to search for some uh, non-interacting aspects as well as find topological index in this system. So for that, we have this criteria from our simple model systems. So let's check that. We took as a platform the ABB, ABAB stacked twisted double bilayer graphene, where I take two copies of AB stacked bilayer and with a relative twist. And this twist angle we chose as 1.1 degree to be specific. In, in the, I can choose in theory anything, but the, our experimental friends has exactly synthesized that near the 1.1 degree. So as you can see from the structure, it is evident the space inversion is broken. Now whether there is any tenability or not. That's why we put a vertical electric field here and we see that uh, bands near the Fermi energy, which was less dispersive in nature, they start uh, like pushed from one each other and opening up a gap, forming a metal insulator transition. So there is a ten tenability. And the second uh, last thing is that whether time reversal is preserved in the system or not. So uh, there is no spin uh, index here. So it should be like this time reversal path and the, this time reversal partner, like this path and this path should be on top of each other to, to preserve that. We see within one valley it is not protected. But when we are like uh, um, across the valley or taking the full Hamiltonian, the time reversal symmetry criteria is preserved in the system. So these three initial conditions were satisfied. We are happy. Now we calculated the, when the nonlinear Hull conductivity with the help of the Berry curvature dipole here, we get identically zero. So what we have missing here? So the missing thing is that we are expecting something from the low energy Hamiltonian. We are not taking into account any crystal symmetry. Here in the pristine twisted double bilayer graphene, that is a C3 symmetry, right? And in this three C3 symmetric paths, the Berry curvatures are actually on top of each other. And when you calculate some integration over Berry curvature times the velocity, the velocity follows the velocity sum rule uh, in these three parts, and it is on top of each other. So it's this. It's C3 for the Moire unit cell? Or? Yes, because uh, this is calculated with the Moire unit cell, yeah. So as a very smallest perturbation, we introduce strain here, because that is evident in any, any experimental only synthesized systems, right? Because there should be some strain because they are growing the sample on a substrate, HBN substrate, and there should be some strain. It will not be strain independent. And uh, for the simplistic case, we put an uh, uniaxial strain in the system, and that breaks this C3 symmetry. So now we are getting, this is the band dispersion, and this is a Berry curvature dipole. Yeah, we are getting some finite number. So we are happy with that. So now when we are approaching to our experimentalist friend, there should be some thing like electrical response where we can measure this, as well as in different experimental labs, there should be uh, some apparatus to measure thermoelectric and as well as the thermal, because different lab has different expertise. So this is not only the electrical response, sorry. This we have defined for the electrical response. 
there should be, uh, it should be visible in the thermoelectric response also. What uh, do I mean by that? If there is a temperature difference and we can get an electrical response in the transverse direction, that is the thermoelectric and the vice versa. And uh, the thermal current is that uh, if we have a temperature difference, we can get a thermal current. And these three are not independent. This electric and the thermal part is related by the Widerman Franz law and these two are related by the Mach relation. So whatever we can see here, we can see the similar structure in the other two. So we have three different uh, experiments where we can see this nature. So far we are only getting the nonlinear anomalous Hall effect, no connection to the topology. Now, now our uh, experimental friends has synthesized this and measured the nonlinear Hall response. This uh, is the V2 omega, if it's not visible, this is the second order, order signal, like the transfer signal times, like divided by the longitudinal response. And this x axis d, you can think of some scaled uh, vertical electric field, which is the tuning norm. Near some point of d equals to minus 0.23, if you convert it, it is like 34 MeV or so, there is a sharp transition between this signal. It, it is much more visible here because it is actually changing sign. Now to analyze that, theoretically we have done the scaling analysis, taking into account all the extrinsic, intrinsic, all the parts like skew scattering, side jump, and the very curvature dipoles. And here we figured out that this forms a very simple relation where this uh, slope, this, this slope of this line is contains the extrinsic contribution only, but from this intercept, we are getting the information of the Berry curvature dipole. And they extracted for these two regimes, the Berry curvature dipole is opposite in sign. And that's something we expect. So next, we have calculated theoretically also around this point what is happening. So we choose uh, two delta values, uh, 38 and 25, around this 34 point, like before and after what is happening. So you can see, this is the Berry curvature color map, which is changing, as well as this is the two components of the Berry curvature dipole, the peaks are changing, like it was to start with negative, it was positive, and it is changing, just opposite. And to analyze it further, we have made a phase diagram for different delta values with respect to the energy. So it is very specific to one point or not. So we see, no, there is a gradual transition, like from this to this, this was completely red. There is nothing. At, at this particular point, this is changing sign, the Berry curvature dipole. And if we calculated the, our introduced Z2 index for this kind of systems, which is uh, changing also from 2 to 0. So this is something like two phase, uh, two different phases and we are going from one phase to another uh, and yeah. Whether it is very specific to this point because delta equals to 34, why it is coming. So for to analyze that, we have calculated for different strain values because to start with, we chose a very un, uh, simple uniaxial strain, whether it is dependent on that or not which changed the strain angles and also the vertical electric field strength. And we see that there are several phases. This is like the Z2 indices for the conduction and the valence band. There are several phases, like these colors are basically the different Z2 indices with the color maps. And each of these transition is accompanied by a band gap closing of this consecutive point. So let's see for there is, there is a transition between this and this is associated with the band gap closing between the valence and the conduction band. Now the, our next job is to analyze this with the Berry curvature dipole. And we see similar nature like the butterfly plot. For each transition you are getting some butterfly like feature. And if you remember, the some schematic of this butterfly was the cover page of my talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we are happy like uh, this was the electrical, uh, the nonlinear Hall coefficient for the electrical response. And the, when we calculate the thermoelectric response, this is identical. And these are the thermal response, the X and Y component. So this is associated with that. So what is the take home message now? So the take home message is this um, like topological transition and the change of Berry, sign of the Berry curvature dipole is very generic. We have calculated for different stackings 
like a different number of uh, layers, it, it is generic, it is not specific to any systems. Or even if you can define some Berry curvature dipole for 3D time reversal symmetric systems where you can get uh, different Berry curvature dipole terms, you can get similar nature. That's, that's our expectation. So now at the very last point, I really need to acknowledge our theory team, uh, um, Professor Amita Garwal, Dr. Kamal Dash, our ex uh, experimentalist friends uh, like uh, Mandar Deshmukh, Shubhajit Sina, and Pratap Adav. This, they have done all this complicated experimental synthesizes and device fabrication, and they have done commendable job. And our extended theory team, who, where uh, they have interested in some ferroelectricity in this material, not related to that, but yeah, they are also working on this. And uh, the funding agency, due to whom I'm here right now, ACRB India, Bowl Foundation, and Spice Phenomena. Um, so spin, okay, Spice. And uh, yeah, thank you all for your attention.